Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. With RTX 40 getting closer to not only its announcement, but also release, we're going to look at some very interesting benchmarks which have leaked online, discuss some photos, and also NVIDIA's strategy for the release of Lovelace and how it will try to compete against AMD's RDNA 3 based GPUs. And speaking of AMD, we want to start the video out actually with some Ryzen 7000 stuff. Not only temperatures, but also clock frequencies for the number of threads which are being loaded, which is some information for myself, plus also some additional temperature stuff. And of course, we're going to get right into it after this message from the video's sponsor. And given you're probably going to want to build yourself a new PC soon, it could be the sponsor for you. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So guys, let's start things out with Zen 4. I'm not going to go into the whole spiel of the AM5 platform or really discuss too much on the architecture because we've gone over it numerous times before. But just to catch you guys up, over the past several days, there have been a number of leaks that, uh, well, basically Ryzen 7000 could be a toasty boy. In fact, Tim Apisak has found that, uh, yeah, it can be hitting 91 degrees. Now, this does match some previous rumors that we've been discussed online with a 360 millimeter AIO. But I do want to add that it does seem that BIOS revision does have a meaningful impact into the temperatures. Now, at the moment, how much of a difference it actually makes and what the state of release boards will be, no one knows. And as always with this stuff, I would advocate, you know, leaks are cool and stuff like that, but ultimately it possibly could change literally until the last minute. Um, I actually have tested a couple of boards myself and performance, temperatures, a lot of other stuff, quote unquote, quite literally changed with a BIOS that I was given like 12 hours before embargo. I think that was Zen 1. I, it's either Zen 1 or Zen 2, but I think it was Zen 1 that happened to me with. And so, yeah. Ultimately, this stuff can change quite a bit. Even like a new update for Windows can change scores quite considerably. But speaking of scores, let's discuss those first because they won't take too long. Um, they've actually been compiled by WCCF Tech, uh, but they were originally spotted, I believe, by Tim Apisak. So, the 13900K in single thread on CPU-Z is scoring about 900 points. I will be averaging these scores because... Yeah, um, I think all of us want our sanity intact. Meanwhile, the 7950X is scoring around 790 points, so there is quite a deficit there. The 13900K, though, in multi-thread scores about 17,000 points, which is actually quite a bit higher. It's uh, just over 1,000 points higher than the 7950X. Again, you can see the scores on screen yourself, and credit to 2WCCF Tech. Now, CCD0 with 8 cores was operating an all-core boost of 5.2, but with the CCD1, it also seems it was operating at 5.1. And this is basically OOB, um, which is actually rated to hit 5.7 gigahertz with a frequency max of 5.8, uh, 5.85, excuse me. Now, what I'm about to share with you guys is a, let's call it a graph um, which I've basically remade. So I was actually sent a photo, but I can't show you the photo because it would be way too easy to pinpoint how I got the information. Uh, and I want to give credit to the person, although I can't name them. I want to thank the person who did send me this. Uh, but you can see on screen yourself what the various clocks are. Now, I want to stress, I had to eyeball this. So the clocks could be slightly out by just a little bit. Like, they're not going to be like 500 megahertz out, but they could be a little bit out. But it does give you at least a pretty good indicator as to how um uh, the 7950x will basically operate a different clock frequency sorry with different numbers of threads uh loaded and you know how the clock frequencies will change 
Now, I want to stress, of course, that your system will definitely differ and what you want to do with like overclocking and stuff, of course, will also make quite a difference. And if your system is, you know, running with a really weedy cooler in a small form factor build and the system is basically like at like 200 degrees and, you know, and hotter than the surface of the sun, then good luck. But you get the idea. So these are, um, I, again, I can't even indicate how I got this uh, information. But yeah, long story short, these clocks do seem to be pretty accurate. And so unless there's been a major improvement from a BIOS or something like that, those clocks should be pretty good. Speaking of pretty good, though, I did want to just mention something briefly for Intel. Um, this will be a really quick thing, but basically speaking, we not only have some really nice photos actually of an Intel motherboard, but an overclocker, you can see on screen yourself, has actually managed to overclock a 13900K to 6.5 gigahertz. Um, the really cool thing about this, well, quite literally actually, is that A, the temperatures were not as bad as you would perhaps be led to believe, but B, this is for lightly threaded applications. Now, of course, if you're trying to do something like, you know, Cinebench or, you know, export a video on like Adobe Premiere, this is not realistic. And certainly you will also have Silicon Lottery and all of that stuff. But it's going to be very interesting. I think there's going to be a lot of discussion for the 13th generation versus like Zen, you know, which is the better option. I still am going to be very curious to see what the motherboard situation is. There have been a couple of leaks that the uh, AM5 boards are really expensive, especially if you go with something like the MSI Godlike board. I think it was, I can't remember what it was, but it was well over a thousand bucks. And I know those boards are not exactly, you know, $2.50 and you can't buy them with a pack of chewing gum, you know, traditionally, but still, these things are going to be really expensive. Like, they're ex some of the AM5 boards are going to be, you know, giving Fredripper boards a run for its money. And, of course, the other thing as well, and I'm sure most of you have probably figured this out anyways, you've got AM5 memory, uh, AM5 memory? DDR5 <laughs> memory. Um, I don't know, honestly. I think mean, there's going to be a lot of discussion of whether to go with 13th uh, generation versus Zen 4. It's not just, of course, performance, but also temperatures, power consumption, uh, and obviously platform costs, especially if you're going like mid-range. Um, I'm going to be very interested to see how Intel uh, end up pricing the processors. There have been a lot of leaks for both AMD and um, Intel boards, as well as the Intel processors. Obviously, AMD have officially confirmed the pricing of Ryzen 7000 at this point. So I'm going to be very interested to see how all of this shapes up. Um, at the end of the day, I think most of us would agree that, you know, let's, let's just use, you know, AMD's processors for the sake of discussion. Uh, something along the lines of like a you know an eight core cpu is generally you know going to be more than adequate for gaming so there's going to be a lot of uh there's going to be a lot of decisions i think being made here and it's also going to be very interesting to see how these processes deal with things like under vaulting you know what the average uh, clock frequency is going to be like and so on and so on at the end of the day it's still really early and i think that it's going to probably take a couple of bios revisions especially on the amd side since everything is so different architecturally um you know it's basically an entire new platform whereas intel i'm not saying it's the exact same thing but it's not that different it's basically copy paste and then you basically just type you know increase the you know increment the clock frequency and caches and core count a little bit it's not quite that simple, but you get the idea. Speaking of getting the idea, I want to discuss RTX 40. Now, there are a couple of renders that have already leaked online, and we've already seen numerous photos of the card, but yeah, here's another one. The usual caveat is that this could be totally and utterly fake. Um, but anyway, Qubit Leaks has, well, um, leaked it. Now, there is also an RT, and this is what I find much more interesting, there is an alleged RTX 40 benchmark, well, several benchmarks, actually. These are Control, Metro, Minecraft, Quake, Dying Light, and so on and so on. They all essentially are games which feature ray tracing. There are also things like Blender and a couple of other bits and pieces as well. Now, there are not exactly numbers associated with them. So, for example, it's not given an absolute frame rate. So, for example, if we look at control, it's two times faster than the gray bar. And basically, that's the problem. First of all, this could be fake. The second point is that they don't specify the skew that it's 
uh, well, the, the benchmark skew. So it could be the 4090, it could be the 4080, it could be the 4050 for all we know. Most likely, and this is a guess on my part, don't hang me if I'm wrong, it's probably the 4090. I don't think the 4080 would hit these results. I had heard, um, I'm sure most of you had anyway, that, you know, we're looking at a two times increase to a 2.2 times increase. I'm assuming these are ray tracing results. One person told me they probably are, but they didn't tell me, like, they definitely were. They just, they guessed they were. And that's not a leak. So my personal guess is it's probably, you know, some ray tracing going on. Um, whether it's with DLSS or something else, I don't honestly know. It's going to be very interesting to see how RTX 40 ends up um, performing. So I do want to discuss just for a moment the RTX 40 release schedule because honestly there has been a ton of conflicting information. Now basically speaking, I've been told that yeah, we're going to see the announcement at the NVIDIA event, nothing new there, but the cards are going to be released some point in mid, well mid next month. I don't have an exact release date. Um, I was told by one person it was like just late, uh, sorry, late mid. So you, I don't want to give the release the exact date because they asked me not to, but it was like late mid. But then the date I checked with another source, they said, yeah, that's not quite right. So I don't exactly know what the release date is, but I've basically heard it's going to be mid next month. But that's the 4090. And there are a number of course, uh, sorry, a number of RTX 4090 leaks, of course, at this point. And I think, ultimately speaking, we are closer to the 4090 seeing a release than the 4080. Um, now, whether the 4080 does get launched, there's been some news recently, of course. I think Amy covered it, that the 4080 has two models associated with it, 12 and 16 gigabytes. I've heard the 16 gig one is going to be the one that's launched. But then there's also some other info that the 12 gigabyte and the 16 gigabyte are both going to launch simultaneously. Honestly, I don't know. It could be like slightly different SKUs, like the 40, like the 30, 80, 12 and 10 and God knows what. But it would be very odd for them to launch those simultaneously. I would have thought that they would have released like, I don't know. I mean, it would have made more sense to me for it to be like the 30, the 4070 Ti, the 12 gig. I don't know, honestly. I'm spitballing. I, I don't honestly know because these rumors, there are so many conflicting rumors on what the SKUs are. And ultimately, I think the main reason behind this is that NVIDIA themselves are kind of waiting a little bit. My speculation, and this is not... Um, this is not unfounded because a couple of people have told me that they believe this is right, speaking to people in the industry. Um, including an AIB, but it seems like NVIDIA basically want to go first, release the 4090, and then react according to what AMD does with the, you know, RDNA 3 series. My speculation is that they feel that the 4090 is in pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, positioning to take on the flagship N31 SKU. Um... And then, obviously, they still know they can release the 4090 Ti if it needs to, if they need to take the performance crown. Um, but this also gives them some other options, like, for example, they can adjust the pricing, they can adjust the performance of other SKUs, and generally speaking, it leaves them a little more wiggle room. The other benefit is... Let's assume, for sake of discussion, that the 4090 is faster than RDNA 3. Let's not say it's much. Let's even say it's a couple of percentage points. But they don't release any other RDNA, sorry, any RTX 40 cards other than the 4090. So if AMD then release N31 and it's slightly slower, the best strategy AMD could do is potentially undercut um, NVIDIA in terms of pricing. Whereas on the other hand, if they launch the 4080 as well, they could use quite an aggressive marketing campaign and, you know, release certain SKUs to kind of, you know, show comparisons against the 4080 as well. I don't know. I think NVIDIA basically just want to try and control the narrative as much as possible, which isn't really surprising because let's face it, AMD have done the same with its marketing. Long story short, guys, there's still a lot of questions on the strategies going forward with both companies. I'm going to be very, very, very interested to see pricing. I think the 4090 is going to be a little more than the 1390 MSRP, but I don't know because that's based on older information I received. But now with all of the craziness that's going on in the industry, I 
you know you guys know what's going on in terms of like you know the uh, the 3080 and 3080 ti both got some cuts there's even some reports that they're releasing like a gigabyte 36 is i think it was um and a lot of those are going to be funneled to oems and to be honest amd are in the same situation it's going to be very interesting i am super hyped though for the launch of the next generation cards both amd and nvidia i think have some really interesting products and it's going to be very very cool to see what they can do in games like hypothetically speaking if those numbers and again those numbers aren't too far off from what we've heard you know i've personally have heard with dlss control can hit like 150 160 frames a second um at 4k now of course that is again with dlss but that is with ray tracing enabled as well so even without um dlss in theory you could be hitting like 80 100 120 frames a second with many games and with dlss even at the higher uh, higher quality settings i got there the higher quality settings you could be hitting like 140 160 whatever frames a second which is kind of nutty at 4k um it'll be very interesting to see how developers really take advantage of that anyway i think that's about enough of my rambling for this video it kind of went on a little longer than it anticipated and i'm gonna let you go hopefully though you will stick around and subscribe to the channel and i will see you soon have an amazing day stay safe bye for now